Good morning. Um, today's Tech Tuesday session will be on the Honeywell CR120 wall modules. The modules are a silk enabled device, which means that they are communicating with the controller on that silk bus. Uh, the Silk Bus is a two-wire uh, network which provides communications and power to the Silk-enabled devices. It's polarity insensitive, so it doesn't matter, you know, plus minus doesn't doesn't uh, come into any bearing on this. So it's uh, easy to wire. You can use pretty much 18 to 24 gauge. You just got to watch your distances. Um, your best and longest is using. Uh, non-shielded twisted pair, uh, 18 to 22 gauge. And you can daisy, daisy chain or home run your wiring back to the controller so you can have multiple silk devices. What about to the level four specification that they had? I pulled this off the latest documentation. I know it's, and that's pretty much, I think the level four is really what that 18 to 22 part is. And then if we just look at a comparison of what's available, um, for the sensors on the uh, Silk Bus, uh, you'll see there now there we have two TR120s. There's a 120 and a 120H. Uh, the H model has humidity as part of it. Um, and we'll go through the features of it as we move along. And then the, the models that we've had for quite some time now, we've got the TR75, same with the humidity, and a TR71, TR71H. Uh, the big difference between the 75 and the 71 is the ability to uh, use the or to access the scheduling in the controller. And these models between the TR120, 75, and 71 will all work on the webs on the uh, Honeywell Striker, the Honeywell Spider. They're calling it Spider Classic, meeting the um, the standard PUL PUB. Spiders, not the Spider 5. And then you also have uh, the non configurable models, the TR 42s, which you can get with just, with just temperature, temperature plus humidity, CO2, or uh, humidity and CO2 with the temperature. And then you have the TR 40, which is without a display. And you get the same flavors temperature only, or temperature with humidity, temperature with CO2 and temperature with uh, humidity and CO2. And again, these are all silk uh, enabled, so it's just two wires from the sensor back to the controller. So you're not using up any I.O. on the controller for these. And the TR40 series can only be used on the Spider Classic, again, the PUL, PUB Spiders, uh, the Spider 5, and also the Cyper 30. And as you can see, these don't work with the striker controllers. Just a little overview on the TR120. Uh, it does have a color touchscreen. It's a resistive LCD touchscreen. Um, it's uh, pretty sensitive. I shouldn't say it's sensitive. It's got pretty good action on it. It's not. It works well uh, when you're pressing up and down arrows, or you're pressing in number keys, or or the selectable areas. Um, obviously, you can uh, manage multiple functions, temperature, humidity, fan speed, scheduling, just like you were able to do with the TR-71s and the TR-75s. Um, it's tamper-proof. It means that you have a password that you would enter. If you set up a password, uh, when you go into the, uh, to try to get to the contractor mode, it would come up and um, have a screen where you punch in the numbers for the uh, password. And I have some screenshots showing that as well. Um, I like the 71 and the 75 from a configuration screen. Uh, you're able to go in there and, and add points so you can um, view and be able to access and modify set points and, and other points uh, within the controller. One of the nice things about this, uh, different from the TR70 series, is that you can mount it vertically or horizontally. They call it portrait or landscape modes. Uh, and there's a, uh, that's something right from the screen itself that you change it. 
Um, it's not like a, an iPad or an iPhone where you turn it and it switches for you. You've got to go in and tell it which way you'd like to see it uh, to view from. Easy to install, easy to commission. Um, it's a 4.3 inch di diagonal screen and the pixel resolution is 480 by 272. <coughs> Is uh, decent uh, resolution. As I mentioned from that chart on the <coughs> slide, it's designed and is compatible uh, for use with the spiders, meaning the PUB, PUL spiders, um, the striker controllers, as well as the Cyper Model 30 controller. You can have a maximum of one of these on a silk bus. You cannot have more. It uses up too much power to have more than one on the network. And I would imagine at some point Honeywell will be updating their um, that spreadsheet for calculating silk devices. So I would think if you wanted to use a, the uh, Enthalpy One or something like that. Um, I'm not sure what the quantity is on the Cypher 30. On the 120? On the 120s on a Cypher okay. 30. Okay. The question was asked last week. So on the Cypher 30, you can do four of the TR120, so they must have a beefy or power supply for that silk bus. And one of the nice things about this device, and actually it's, it's I guess, the main feature of it, it directly replaces a 71 or a 75. So if you have a TR71 or a TR75 on the wall, um, without doing any application downloading or, or any kind of programming changes, you can take that TR-71 or 75 off the wall, wire this up, and it'll be downloaded from the controller and it'll work. There is no special programming. So what that really means is when you're configuring this in, a, in the software, you're basically configuring it as if it's a 71 or a 75. So it's the same feature function set that you had on a 71 and 75. There are no, fe no new features yet until they actually build New features with the tool sets. The biggest difference between a 71 and a 75 is scheduling. Oh, okay. That's the, That's the yeah. So sub base is different for both models, so you would be replacing both. You can't just take a 75. Right, you got to take the whole thing off. Okay. And it's much easier taking on and off to the point that it's easy. I mean, at least the TR 75 and 71, it's almost like it's tamper proof that you can't pull it off unless you really wanted to take it off the wall. With this, that's not the case. You can. You know, four fingers, two hands, you can pull it right off easily. Oh, yeah. You got to use a screw. So, you know, you got to keep that in mind. If you need, you know, tamper proof, there's no tamper screws or anything like that. So, I would think that if, if there was a requirement, especially in a school or somewhere like that, you'd have to put some kind of a thermostat guard over it if there was a need to do that. Use your phone, guys, unless you have a question, please. The home screen, just like a 71 or 75, um, you're able to display different parameters. So you have, you know, temperature set point, room temperature, room humidity, outdoor, outdoor temperature and humidity. You can display the time, pretty much any other parameter that you put in there. Guys, use your phones if you don't have a question, please. Get a lot of feedback. Thank you. And then, as I mentioned, there is password protection like the 71 and 75 um, to restrict the uh, normal operator from being able to go in and do anything on the, uh, on the wall module. Just like the 71 and 75, you can assign labels for your enumerator, enumerator values, like for your your the um, so you can go in like if you have you know fan off slow high or whatever you can put in instead of just numbers just like the 71 and 75 so you can put an enumerated value because these are really just emulating a TR 71 and 75 in the tools you're still restricted to the same characters. So you can't use every letter or anything like that, even though this is an LCD display that can display anything. So you're still restricted, right, until they upgrade the tool for a TR120, which I would think at that point 
it would allow you to do anything like that. Right. And um, even with the, uh, the Cypher Model 30, they now have a selection in there for TR120, but when you look at the, the property sheet for, and I have a screenshot of it, it does say TR75 emulation. So it's still working that way. And, you know, like you did with the 71 and 75, you can link your set point uh, limits to network variables so you can get to them from here. Um, you can access and adjust pretty much most or if not all of your parameters that are in your application. The controller schedule you can change from there. Uh, like we had with the Venom applications, you're able to do the VAV balancing right from the ZO, and the TR120 works just the same. And so you're just going into the contractor mode and going to the balancing screens. Installation of it, as I mentioned, it's just two wire. That's what you have. You don't have the four wires like you have on a 71 or 75 where you have the eighth inch jack underneath for the network if you wanted to wire it. This is strictly just two wires. It's got two terminals on it. Um, and you'll see the sub base is, is much different than the mounting is different than the TR71 and 75. Uh, so it's much simpler to put on and take off. Um, the addressing is dip switch selectable. They went back to this where I think the, the tier 71 and 75s were all rotary switches. For contractor mode, um, basically what you're doing is in the upper left corner, there's a Honeywell logo. You, hold, you press and hold that for five seconds. Then it'll come up with a, you know, I have one of the end slides, I have the sequence of the, the screens that come up. But first it comes up and gives you the firmware version and the um, address that it's set for. And um, the wall module version will, sh version will show up on that splash screen. Then it'll go to the password screen, assuming that there's a password. If, if you didn't assign a password and told it not to use one, then it goes right to the uh, screen that allows you to go to uh, the screen settings or the installer setup or the parameters like you would normally when you go into a contractor mode on a 71 or a 75. So you see on the right here, one of the big differences, the TR71 and 75, you had to use the up and down arrows to change your numbers for your password. This, you're actually punching the number keypad to do your password. And you have the ability to change what you want to call, what, what label you want to put on there as well. And then from the installer menu, once you get into the contractor mode, you have the ability to change your screen orientation, um, the brightness of the screen when it's inactive, to do firmware upgrades. Uh, and you can do logo selection. It's only selectable for two of them. It's Honeywell or Central Line. If there's no uh, way to import your own logo and put it in there. Now, it's not to say down the road they won't do, won't do that. I haven't heard anything on that. There is a micro SD card slot on it that's used for doing your uh, firmware upgrades. So, you know, I guess hopefully there's a possibility down the road that will allow you to put your own one there. But uh, that remains to be seen. When a new firmware version comes out, you will go in and uh, put it on, put the, the bin file, the binary file on, the, on a micro SD card and you would uh, insert it in the slot on the TR120 and uh, utilize the firmware option when you go into the installer setup. Uh, and then it'll update the firmware. Addressing, like I said, is via deep, deep switches. And when you're using the spider tool and the striker tool, you basically would just choose TR75 as the wall module type. So in the, if somebody were to buy 40 of these or whatever, put them on their USB boxes two years from now or a year from now when the firmware upgrade comes down the line, they're going to have to run around to each and every one of those. And if there's a read, there wouldn't be, a, it, only if there's a feature that they need for now. I mean, it could be late for the events download yet. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not a, it's not a communicating cost between sensors. That's going to be the only way. I mean, if you think about it, when the, when the TR-75s and TR-71s came out, they never had a firmware upgrade Not that you could do with them. There was no, there's no just way of fighters. Right. <laughs> so 
so that's why I'm wondering if there's more to it than just that. Maybe it will allow us to do some type of a logo. It's going to, you know, it's a small file or something. But right now, there is no way of doing that. So basically, we'll keep it at Honeywell. There's no reason for us to switch it to, to Central Line. So when you're setting up, like I said, in Spider and Striker tool, you're going to choose TR75. When you're in this Cypher 30, you're going to be choosing um, TR120. And it'll be a 75 emulation at that point. So if we look at the differences, this would be a typical spider um, setup. So when you go into your S plus wall module configuration wizard in your um, in your uh, application, you're going to choose TR75 or TR75H if you have humidity. And then you would do your normal configuration. You would add your categories and parameters. You you adjust your home screen. So if we just look at the home screen. Um, the TR-75, you can see how there's, we show three different sections here. We got room temperature, we got uh, set point, we have humidity. So on a TR-75, this is how the values, how everything's represented. When you look at a TR-120 in the, um, the uh, portrait mode, temperature is the first one, then you move down, you get your set point, and then you have your humidity. And if you have more things in the screen, if you're if there's more things to be put on the screen that, than what will fit, you get up and down arrows. Same thing when you get to the parameters. If there's more than what fits on the screen, you have the uh, scroll bar, or not scroll bar, you got the scroll up and down uh, arrows for that. You don't have to display those, correct? No. Correct. No, you don't. You can do up to that. It just display one at room temp, separately or something. And then at the bottom, you can see how the uh, if you look at the differences of the unoccupied versus you know, unoccupied, occupied, then you have it represented on the uh, TR120. Same thing with the fan and the system, so you can see how they uh, are displayed. And then in the, in the landscape mode, in the horizontal mode, here's the representation of it. Fan move on it? No. No. Oh. The guy goes in the house, that's it. <laughs> And then in the uh, the, the uh, Cypher 30, uh, when you go into the palette, the programming tool, under Silk Devices, there's TR120. And you're going to choose TR120, TR75E, or TR120H. So then when you drop them in, you'll see where the application type is TR75 emulation. And you can see in here, when you enable the password protection, you assign a label and you assign what the password would be. And then if you look at the, the various views, and this is off of one I had on the, on the bench. When you first go to the sensor, up in the left will be the uh, logo, again, Honeywell or Central Line. So when you press and hold for five seconds, it comes up with the model type, gives you this information. Then if password protection is enabled, it'll take you to the password screen. You punch in your numbers, and then it'll take you to the screen that you get to go to installer menu, or you can go to parameters. So if we go to the installer menu, uh, installer menu, you'll see your installer options. You got orientation, again, portrait or landscape. Um, inactivity, brightness, so you can change how bright it would be when it's not active if you were doing a firmware upgrade, and then logo selection. When you click on logo selection, it just comes up and with a checkbox for Honeywell or, or Central Line. And then if you go down to parameters, it's just like the TR-71 or TR-75. It brings you up the menu of set point sensors and status, or if you have others you added, I guess they would show up there as well. And I showed it the landscape and the portrait view to show the difference. So if we went from set points to, this, you know, to the set point category, Here's our six set points showing up. In the uh, landscape mode, you'll see that they don't view at one time. You can't see them all at one time, so you get the scroll bar with the up and down arrows to be able to get to those. So it's very much like the TR-75, but it's, it's much nicer looking. than uh, the screen's much better than what was on the, uh, the TR-75.
so realistically, if you were to go back in and look at your, uh, I don't even know why, let's see. So if we're working within a spider, oh, that's why I'm on. I'm not on our network. I'm on the training network. So if we were to go into the application, you're not doing anything different. There was nothing new added. This is 4.8. There was nothing new added uh, to the spider tool for the TR120. So when you go in, you're just choosing TR71 or TR75 for that. Same thing, the, uh, you know, if you have password protection or not, set that up. Your home screen settings, nothing changes from what we've been we've been doing since Spider Tool came out. And then the same thing on the, uh, on the Cypher 30. Oh, yeah, it's not going to connect because I'm not on the it's really it's network. Not Hmm? Yeah, because that's going to mess that up up there. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, for the Cypher 30, the uh, the selections are the same as what we would do with the, with the 75. And I tried to set it up with my, uh, my little D-Link camera to do a live shot of it, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it was a Windows update that I got on my machine, but it's no longer supported. So I can't use that. I tried to use my iPad, but that's doesn't you don't get a good shot of, of the um, of the sensor. That's why I was trying to do some of these um, screenshots. But uh, these are probably the best shots to get a view of what, what they do look like. Well the same module they're using for the LCPS. It is the LCBS Connect. It's the exact same. Now, I don't know if they have new firmware in there to work with this. I imagine it is different firmware, but um, it's the yeah, it's the same exact um, screen and bezel everything. So I would imagine everything but the firmware or the you know the, the smarts of it. Display-wise, I think it's the same. Now, back to the I guess the main thing, and I'm sure. Everybody's got questions. Is you know what kind of pricing is it in comparison to a 71 or a 75? All right. So <clears throat> TR 71 list price at the fire multiplier is 271.37. A TR 75 is 380.30, and then the TR 120 is 346.50. So it's 35 bucks less list price than a TR-75. When you get to the humidity models, um, a TR-71H is 530, a TR-75H is 615, and the TR-120H is 546. So it, it's a better price. I don't know why anybody wouldn't use it over a 75. Over a 75. Over a 75. I think most people, the only time they use a 75 if they have standalone and they need schedule. Right. It's the 71, right. I think, probably gets used more often. I mean, I, obviously, I sell a 42 more than anything, but yeah. just because of price. But, it, you know, if you're using the 75, there's no point. Yeah. There, there's really no point. But the 71 is, how much was the price difference, roughly? And this is all lists. So this is all lists. So 71 is 271.37, and the 120 is 3.46. So they're bucks cheap. 70 bucks. Yeah, that's list. significant list. But again, if, there's no point in 75. I don't know why they set that price point there. Yeah, and I maybe less to produce. Maybe they want it to go away. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's got to be a component issue or something like that. Right. They want to get rid of it. I mean, there is no discussion at this point on doing end of life on the TR-70 series, but um, you would think down the road at some point they'd want to consolidate based on component availability. I haven't um, played around with the 120 at all, but in a 71 or a 75, you have the ability, say, uh, the tenon has viewable and editable to all parameters. No, there's no contractor move. Can he just scroll through, or do you have to jump to the parameter screen to get? There is no parameter screen for tent for the regular view. You just scroll through everything. You just go through the more view like you would with a TR-75. It gets on. I mean, here you can. So you just view more and then you have, right, okay, I got it. And are these fields? Rather than cycling through one point at a time, yes. you see the whole list. Yes, which is nice. And then you hit each, yeah, that makes it a lot easier. Because it's a lot, you know, how many times have you gone through when you, you're jumping through two fast, you go all the way back around and you miss it the second time, yeah. That's kind of nice to have uh, that feature. Jack, can you see this? <laughs> I mean, if you really needed to, I could jump on with WebEx on my iPad, but it just would be bouncing around and wouldn't do as much good. Um, well, Jim or Jack, have you guys used this at all yet? Or did you even know that we have plenty of inventory? I do now. I, we have not. Okay. Kind of used the TR-75s for exactly that, the, you know, the scheduling option and we don't really put too many of the TR series out in the field, you know, for cost reasons. Right. I hope they, they do have plans. Uh, a fair amount. What's your, what, do you use conventional stats? Is that where you're uh, we, the majority of your? Yeah, we mostly use we mostly use conventional. And, and if it's a uh, spec job and they call for some sort of display, we'll use the uh, TRs, the TR42s. That's strictly a cost thing. I, yeah, totally a cost thing. I mean, you know, what's a conventional stack cost versus the TR42? Okay. You know, the, the, oh, yeah. I mean, we, we do use. That has a display on it. We, we do use the uh, 42H CO2s when we need the CO2 option because then it becomes a little more cost effective because you're getting, you know, both. You're getting your thermostat and your um, CO2 module. Yeah, but. To my knowledge, there's no way to calibrate that CO2. Yeah, I'm not a way of aware. And CO2 is something every three or four years has to be calibrated. So you have to bear that in mind. I mean, I know after a year you guys are off the job, but on a uh, more expensive guy, those are, you know, you have the ability to calibrate them. Yeah, I've never seen a spec that called out requirements for calibration. On the yeah, now if they were lot lab type environments, you're going with a NIST certified type instrument. Right. That's, that's a little different. different. Yeah. For like a school or something like that, they're slapping it on your lid. So. And honestly, Honeywell has the best price for temperature humidity and CO2 compared to JCI and stuff like that. The, the cost on the silk sensors is really good. With the ACI. Silk sensors. So if you if you need an OEM display, temp humidity or temp humidity and CO2, Honeywell by far is the best place. Over SA bus type. Yeah. Yeah, they really yeah, that's that's one thing Johnson has not been well for CO2, so. Do you guys have any questions at all on that? Um, or is it given the, the display Frank? Is yeah. there any indication that they're going to kind of open that up to make it a real display? You know, one of the uses we have for the TR-70 or TR, mostly the TR-71, 75s, 
is kind of an MMI for the spider. But yeah, it's that's exactly not right. the most, that, that gets used for that. Yeah, but that, it's not the most convenient when you, you don't have full access to the alphabet. So, do you? Is there any noise that they're going to actually make this thing where where you're not going to be limited like the the TR seventy ones are now? I just I just emailed Vince Kelly asking about updates to the tool for that. He's not aware, but he emailed the product manager. So, if I hear something, Jack, I'll let you know. I would have to believe at that, some point they're going to be coming up. That's what his tool is. Yeah. They got to do something. I would think yeah. that there's going to at least to give you the ability to use them. Because I can tell you, just the label for the password alone, the label for the password is all capitals in a TR-71 or 75. I put in capital P, lowercase password with the capital P, and I just swap out between my TR-75 and the TR-120 with the addressing so I can they're both using the same um, component in the program, just one at a time. And it shows up like on the TR-75, all capitals, because that's all it can do. The, TR, the TR-120 actually showed it, password with a capital P, the rest lowercase. So I think there's already some things in there like that. So I would have to believe sometime down the road. I mean, I'm sure it's probably something on their list that may not be a high priority, especially on the spider end. Um, you know, it may be something that uh, will be seen on, you know, Cypher 30 going forward or something. Maybe not as much on the, the Spider. You know, the Spider Model 5, the, the Spider 5 is doesn't have Silk Bus, so I imagine the new VAV one coming out wouldn't as well. And let me, or maybe they will add them back in. I'm not sure. I didn't hear anything on that part. It doesn't have Silk Bus. Yeah. I'm sorry, it has silk bus, but it doesn't do the TR-120, no, 75, and 71. So I think part of that is it doesn't have the memory to be able to do the big of that, big, at that big of an application in the, on the silk bus, you know, with the memory it needs in the controller. But they are doing a new tool for the Spider 5 that hopefully will be out this summer, but the first, way, first phase is going to be a new um, Spider Micro VAV controller in Spider 5 series. Um, that's like that black one that I have from Asia. It's going to be the same footprint, same same look, just no Mac switches on it. Um, but they'll be coming out with a new palette of, of components matching more of the Spider, and they'll be it'll be just like or similar to the Cypher 30, where if you have Spider applications, the Spider library, you'll be able to migrate them into the Spider 5 realm. That's a new tool to do that. Not to get off of the TR-120 the TR topic, but since we're talking about Spider 5s, do we have access to the central line fan coil application that they use in Europe? Yeah, we have it. Okay. It's, yeah, it's up on BP Tech Center. Um, that's the only application. In Europe, that's the only thing they use that controller for. If that application doesn't fit, they use something else. But we do have it, yeah. so that's, that's... Yep. So the branch uses it here as well? Just for that same purpose, though, because the pallets for it are very limited in components, unlike the, uh, the spider um, components that are available for, the, for programming. So like I said, they're revamping that. It's almost like they let it out too early. You know, so it makes more sense now, it's Spider Model 5, meaning it's, I guess, the fifth version. And if the Spider, if that tool is going to be able to work with the Spider uh, applications, you know, migrating them over, then I can sort of see now why they're calling it that. Where in the beginning, I had no idea why they called it that because there really wasn't any similarities. They wanted to get it off. Yeah. Jack, have you seen Spider 5? Anybody show it to you yet? I, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I sat in on that one. Look, it looks like it. I mean, the price point on that device is great, and it looks got, like it's got some capabilities. But again, it's it's kind of limited right now. So what was that? Yes, you saw it on Tech Tuesday, right? I <laughs> did. Brody sales team. One of my <laughs> my favorite Tuesdays. <laughs> I even saw that that right. that, that micro uh, VAV is the one that was sitting on the dollar bill. Is that the one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's a real product that we are going to see. Yes, actually, I sh I'm supposed to be getting four or five of them this month. For uh, it's supposedly part of beta, but the the initial um, devices that they're sending out are not plenum rated. So they, you know, they they you know they're looking for bench testing, but also if you put them in a box or two, like in your own office, you're going to have to replace them because they're not plenum rated. I don't know if it's the plastic they used or what the difference was, but I know that was one of the things that they um, well, that will change. change. Jan, did you program your Spider Five yet? No, it's still sitting in the box. All right. All right, and then the last piece of this, and it's going to be the same thing. I'm going to probably be ending Tech Tuesdays with for the next year um, is Niagara AX end of life. And, it, and then this, you know, this is something I threw together yesterday from all the different things I've gotten from Tritium. And this is all based on information from Tritium, the Vicon channel, not through any other brands, but everybody's going to have to adhere to Tritium's timeline. Um, so if you think about it, we had and I probably should put on here is the, the, the date that they came out with Niagara 4, but I believe that was in 2015. It was one, 2000, maybe 2014, it may have been. Yeah, it's been out for quite some time. And that was back then they set the date of seven years for AX, for, for end of life. And if it was 2015, then yeah, it would be 2022, right between the last two dates. I have one here. Um, last month, Tritium released their last version of AX, and it's 3.8 U5, which is 3.8.501 or 5 something. Um, and that really will be the last version for those legacy controllers, uh, you know, your 200s, your 300E, 600s, 600D, and 700s including the security case. Um, the, you know, if they, if they do come out, if there is a problem, if there's something that comes out on a cyber security issue, they'll be still posting it for their, um, sending out updates for that as well. Um, but, uh, so that's already happened, that first line there. Come October 1st this year, you won't be able to order any more AX supervisors. To do it, you're going to need to buy an a a Niagara 4 supervisor and purchase the AX downgrade to use it on AX. They should be doing it. And then come July 1st of next year, there will be no more sales of Niagara AX licensing or options. There's no more AX downgrades. There's no more sales and replacements for legacy JSES. Um, there will be no more fixes for cybersecurity issues come July 1st next year. And the only way, like if your supervisor has a Windows update and something happens and the host ID changes or their, their server shits to bed and they got to put it on a different uh, computer, um, the only way that it, the license can be changed is if it has a valid SMA. So if there's a lot of these old AXs that never had one, it could get expensive to do that. And there will be no more um, AX software being distributed from Tritium to any of the uh, Niagara partners. And then fast forward two more years, July 1st, 2023, they basically the license server for AX will be shut down. So there will be no more license changes or anything come that date. Now, the only question I have and I need to get an answer on is, what does that mean for demo licenses? You know, in R2, I mean, hell, there's still, R I got another support call yesterday on R2, so R2 is still around, and that's been gone for, well, over about 10, probably closer to 15 years, if not longer. Um, and if that date comes around, you know there's still going to be AX stuff that's still floating around out there. But if, our, if that's the end of licensing, then that means our license would be March 31st, 2024 is when it would expire for our demo licenses. And if the license server is no more, that means our demo licenses are dead too. Sorry. I would just like to see that in writing from Tritium, but I haven't seen that yet. You work with what did I say? You're saying demo. It's okay. Yeah, yeah the, the, the workbench demo licenses. 
which basically are all of our licenses, contractors, and, and uh, you know, and us. So there are the, the important dates to consider. Um, there will be information coming out on um, trade-up programs. Right now, Vicon has rolled out theirs, and I figure Honeywell's has got to be coming up soon. So there's going to be, you know, when you, you're going from an old legacy Jace to an 8000, there's going to be discounts for that. Um, there's going to be discounts for if you have a 600 with NRIO where you've got IO16s and IO34s, there'll be discounts on the new IOR modules if you're migrating from an old system to a new. So there'll be, you know, programs like that to try to help um, with, uh, with getting those sales done. I mean, the big thing is getting the word out to your customers. Um, we've been getting more in support lately on the SMA expiration showing up when somebody logs in with their browser. Um, and you can hide that because it'll come up and they'll say you've got six months left or you've got two months left, you've got 10 days left of your SMA. Uh, you can hide that part, but as soon as you expire, it pops back up and you can't get rid of it. So it's something that the customer's going to see. Until you, until you, you have to, yeah, the only way that that can go away then is if a new SMA is purchased. Just remember, if it expires, you have to purchase an SMA that covers all the way back to the date it expires. So they're not saving anything by not buying it. Yeah, so say you had a, you're one of the first Niagara Fours and you got a 4 dot, even 4 dot 2 out there and that was probably four years ago. So say it's four years ago it expired. Then if you bought a five-year SMA, that gives you one year because you had to pay for those four years that last. And then, you're, then you, you paid for five, so you have one more year moving forward. So it's, it's definitely something to keep in mind, something you need to come up with a game plan to, you know, with anything, maybe it'll allow you to be, go back and revisit some of the customers you haven't seen in a while. Well, we still get calls on CNAP jobs. We still get calls on CBUS jobs. We still get calls because there are thousands of installations that are out there. Let's play this out a little bit more. We have lots of AX, or contractors have lots of AX installations. Contractor goes away, nothing's been done. Uh, I need help. Jack gets a call. He goes to the site. His tool no longer works, and he can't connect to that JACE anymore. That doesn't seem like a good option for right. anybody. Right. Yeah, that's why that's three years out. So that's yeah, why we need to get the answers on whether that's definitely the case. But I can tell you it is, come July 1st, 2023, if their server dies, they're not getting re-upped. They're going to have to buy Niagara 4. You got to keep in mind, there's a migration path. So they're not getting, they're not stuck in a corner where they can't go anywhere. They can move to Niagara 4 without any problem. In comparison, when you were in R2 moving to AX, you were stuck. You had to start from scratch. That's why most of that hasn't been, that's why it's still running. Until so there's a catastrophic failure, the customer's not going to put the money out to fix it. Yeah. I mean, I, I get what the business model is for the Niagara's and the Honeywell's right. out there. There's just a lot of contract or a lot of end users out there that were sold something by a contractor and, you know, they haven't touched it because that's, they don't have that kind of money, and if something happens and needs to get worked on, you might as well throw it in the trash because nobody's going to be able to work on it. That's, you know, you think about it, that's exactly what, what Windows, what Microsoft did. The nature of software. Microsoft well, stopped supporting software. software. This is building automation components. This is their, this is their building, you know, schedules and stuff like that. Yeah, it's but, not, but it's still software at the end of the day. Everything is in life. You look at the training yeah. system and stuff. It's just beginning. Sure. As I said, we still take calls on CNAP stuff. We can still work on that stuff. We still get calls on. You can still work on. You know. All right. You're, you're going to make an argument either way. Okay. I can. I get it. But I'm just saying. There's. I think that they're. I can still go to the They're doing a disservice to a lot of their people that bought this product. I mean, Jack and, and, and Jim, what are you guys thinking with something like this? What, what would you, would you, would you go back to old customers and try to get them to upgrade? Me and Bill were just talking about that. We're going to send a newsletter out. Um, 
um, to all of our customers. But I, I do have customers that have had the system forever, and I don't see them doing anything with it. We have a lot of small churches that have a single Jace that probably aren't even going to touch it. Let's just wait for it to die. Yeah. That's the exception, I think. I mean, yeah, well, that's exactly the example I was talking about. All these places like churches that don't have money, they were sold something once, they figured, okay, this is my control system. This is not pneumatics where it's going to last forever anymore or for a long, long time. So they're still maintaining old computers then to be able to access their system. Yeah, but we don't so there's, at some point, it could be their computers that die and they right. can't access the system anymore. So at that point, they're putting a new computer, which means they're not going to access an old AXJs unless they upgrade the software in the JSON to be able to, you know, HTML5 without the Java. And granted, I guess at that point you can go to your, you can go to, you know, Web Launcher or whatever with the latest version of AX, but if they're going to spend the money to have you come out and do that part of it, it might as well be Niagara 4. You're not talking that much more work to do that. Can you guys, do you guys have anything from, uh, Icon or Tritium or any of the actual manufacturers that we can kind of send out with our newsletter? Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, there's, Tr Tritium's been doing a pretty good job about. Yeah, if you if you go to Tritium's website, I think you'll find some things there. You can try the Vicon.com yeah. website. I mean, like stuff like that, that's part of why I'm coming up with, you know, this was my first thing I've written up on the end of life. so. You know, I'd like to do more with it so that you can use it. I mean, you can take the verbiage from this and, and, and run with it. That's fine. PDF. Already yeah, done. PDF right. up on, uh, <laughs> yeah, there'll be a PDF up on uh, buildings forms, and you can just copy the text right out of that PDF and use it as you need to. Yeah. What did I say? Oh, what? BP Tech Center. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, wow. You got to look at SMAs as a source of revenue. You know, asset manager, I don't, they're really pushing it. I have to get into it a little more for my guys, but definitely something that you sell with a service contract, control service contract. And there are documents like this. This came out with, with uh, Vicon's announcement. And this is the kind of thing, we'll put this up on our EP Tech Center as well. gives you a lot of that information that I had shown. Yeah, I want to get, so I've, I've got two pretty actual large customers that actually have money to do work on their site and they've refused to do anything for a couple of years now. They're still running a 3-7 supervisor. Well, there, there's cyber issues with that. I mean, that's yeah, that's the bigger issue with those. Yeah. So, I mean, you gotta, you gotta scare them, right? For that stuff, but if they don't have any critical processes or not, they're not worried about it. There's nothing you can really do. We should have a meeting with their IT if they have it. Have Matt come out and talk to them about the cyber, the cyber side of it. Like I said, if you can transfer the money from the HVAC to the IT department, you're golden. They have the money; they'll do it. They sub out their IT guys. It's actually, it's it's and. Uh, they should they should be scared on the cyber side just because it's uh it's a uh with all the HIPAA laws it is a medical building so oh, that, that's a huge issue absolutely so we can talk about that offline yeah 